Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and this is a breakdown of the animation details that you might have missed in the latest trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. New Rockstars divided and conquered on this one. Jessica Clements broke down all the Spider-Man cameos in our Easter egg breakdown. MT will break down the multiverse logic in another video, but in this video, I'm just gonna focus with mad intensity at the fun details hidden in the animation, the character design, the world design, the way characters move. Because New Rockstar super fans might know that I moved to San Francisco because my wife works for Pixar Animation and our dog Darla is named after this human piranha, and my favorite Favorite kind of stuff in movies is when like, you know, Luca's eyes dilate when he looks into the sun. It's not really a reference to anything, it's just an awesome, easy to miss choice made by a talented team of artists. And these Sony Spider-Verse movies are filled with goodies like that. So I'm just gonna break all of that down. So again, in this video, I'm not gonna identify all the Spider-Men, Jess already did that for us. And in this video, if I point out an animation detail, you don't need to go tell Jess that she missed it. She didn't miss it, she was just leaving it for me to find. Just like I'm intentionally ignoring all the cameos here so that she can find them. See, the New York Stars hosts are sure in the load on this one. And thank God, because it gives me a lot more time to dive into this animation. Like right at the top, the O in the Sony glitches open to be a few hexagonal rings, the interdimensional portals that Miles and Gwen and everybody else glides through. And as usual, the Columbia Pictures lady glitches to a couple animated forms. Looks like we get a Jughead comics version, another one with shading lines. But back to my wife's mother is actually an occupational therapist to the real life woman who was the model for this logo. Uh, did I just violate some HIPAA shit? Uh, I hope not. Okay, we fade in on this quiet moment between Miles and his mother, Rio. I can hear you being quiet, Mom. I, um, hope I didn't ice your game, man. No one my age says those words in that order. Now, as before, they animate Miles at 12 frames per second, which is half of the usual 24 frames in modern animation, all to give Miles a more staggered movement and to help each of his poses stand out more, forcing us and Miles to live in his beats, which for Miles means he really feels each of his triumphs, but also really trudges through all of his low moments. Like notice Miles' hands when he talks to his mom. No one my age says those words in that order. Yeah, it's really hard to notice, but Miles jolts his hands just a tiny bit of frustration to emphasize his point as he wants to be left alone, but he's also hiding this from his mom because he doesn't actually want her to leave either. It's a small human gesture and an animator made this. And by the way, Miles can hear her being quiet because he has spider sense, but what he's really saying is deep down, he appreciates his mom reaching out to him in this moment. Now, Miles' New York as he looks out from Brooklyn is larger than real life New York. Like notice the Empire State Building is far from the tallest skyscraper and one building right in the middle has a neon sign for no surprise, Sony. I also like how most buildings are translucent, but some are just empty borderlines, like in video games and comic books, distant horizons are often not filled in all the way. Rio observes how Miles has aged, and the animators did design the character to have hit a growth spurt. He's way lankier now than we last saw him. And by the way, this chat between Rio and Miles is part of Miles leaving that cookout that we see in the other part of the trailer, because later in the trailer, you can see that party behind her. Then we flash back to Miles and various memorable shots from the 2018 Into the Spider-Verse film, but then some new shots of Miles doing some heroics in a Puerto Rican neighborhood. There's a video screen with a character who does look kind of like Jason Schwartzman. Jason Schwartzman is playing the villain, the spot, Dr. Jonathan Own. Miles swoops down to snatch a guy's hot dog. The action word take, popping up for a frame, but Miles webs a $25 bill. Since remember, Universe 1610 has some alternate world details in it, and it sticks to his shirt with dollar signs and a cent sign. Then we see Miles leaving the cookout wearing that Brooklyn jersey, number 42. Of course, that's what his spider was numbered in the first film, and a reference to Jackie Robinson's number on the Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson, of course, played by Chadwick Boseman in the film 42. Now, among the stuff floating around Miles' room, which just did a great job breaking down. There's also a few Teriyakimon cards, such as this universe Pokemon cards. We also know from last year's teaser that there is a wooden moose somewhere in this room, an Easter egg from the Lord and Miller film, Mitchells vs. Machines. Now again, these portal rings are hexagonal, which in the MCU was a recurring shape like the UNTN wormholes and Wanda's hex and WandaVision. But I wonder if each portal could be a distinct universe that Miles could off ramp into as he goes through this bridge. Like notice how Miles passes through each one, he lights up into a different color tone. Now this trippy background looks looks like glowing webs that have been splattered in paint as it was before, but now it has this bridge suggesting that this is Miguel O'Hara's architecture that he built to navigate all of this chaos. Gwen Stacy has now been given her green Chuck Taylors from the comics, which Lord Miller revealed in the after party video were actually borrowed from Hobie Brown, spider punk, voiced by Daniel Kaluuya in this film, a punk musician from Camden. Now Lord and Miller described this area as a college that's run by Miguel O'Hara that Gwen has joined, but Miles is excluded from for some reason. It's sort of like the older girl that goes goes off to college a year earlier and the, and the kid who's like, ah, uh, maybe I'll come up and visit you <laughs> yeah, in college right. sometime. And you're like, ah, okay. Right. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot going on, but. But basically you get invited into Oscar Isaac's cool spider force. <laughs> yeah, into like the spider society and, um, and Miles doesn't. 
and you sort of can't tell him why. We see Miles and Gwen together in this massive 3D structure that is filled with Spider-Man cameos, again, which just broke down. But a few animation details that I love here. There's a Spider-Man with the mechanical Waldo arms and pilot headgear, but his arms hold a laptop that show him the news as he sips his coffee. And yes, there is a Spider-Man policeman who's directing all this foot traffic. Meanwhile, Miles and Gwen are in this lab with some horrifying Spider-Man remains suspended from the ceiling, and Peter B. Parker joins them, and notice he's wearing a baby Bjorn. Lord of Miller revealed that Peter B. had a kid with Mary Jane named Mayday, who's gonna be in this movie, gonna be a bundle of chaos with spider blood in her. Then this great shot of Miles and Gwen sitting beside each other, hanging upside down, Gwen's ponytail hanging upward, her hoodie bunching up around her head, and Gwen leans her shoulder against Miles's. You know, that friendly thing that girls out of your league do that they don't realize makes our hearts explode. Uh, Miles and Gwen's relationship in this movie is bringing me right back to that feeling of being an awkward teen with a massive crush. All of a sudden I'm worried about my skin, my hair, and the way I smell. All things that can be easily improved with a quick trip to geology.com. Geology is a 15 time award winning personalized skincare company recognized in Hypebeast, Birdie, Men's Health, Esquire, and Aspen Grooming Awards with over 6,000 five star reviews. And they've recently expanded to offer products for pretty much whatever you need. All you've got to do is take a quick 30 second diagnostic quiz, and Geology figures out your routine for you. Like if you need some hair care, just use Geology's Co Wash, a specially formulated cream cleanser that removes the buildup and cleanses the hair without the big lather or harsh ingredients of the typical shampoo you can find. For the rest of your shower routine, you can use their body washes. They're free of harsh ingredients. They smell great and are refillable. And for after the shower, protect your skin from environmental stressors with vitamin C plus E ferulic serum to keep your skin looking young and healthy. And then a bit of dermatologist tested aluminum free deodorant that honestly smells pretty great. And right now for a limited time, Geology is hooking our audience up with an absolutely insane offer. If you use the code new rockstars, they will give you an additional 70% off their award winning skincare trial set. That discount applies whether you're stocking up for yourself or stuffing someone else's stocking instead. Either way, Geology has you covered. Check out their awesome gift sets featuring all of your favorite Geology products. To get started, just click the link in the description, take their 30 second diagnostic quiz, and their team of dermatologists will design a personalized routine just for you that ships directly to your door. And then from out of another hexagonal portal is Mother Jessica Drew, Spider Woman, voiced by Issa Rae. I love how we see a series of five pastel outlines of her on her bike, and Jessica has webbing that shoots out of each of her five fingertips. The artist maintained her yellow, black, and red color scheme with red boots and a red jacket, red headband, but yellow sunglasses and a yellow zipper. She looks so great. Now she's fighting a version of the Vulture, voiced by Yorma Tacone, who voiced Green Goblin in the 2018 film. Now his design is a sepia colored sketch. They actually model him on the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. This Vulture is gonna have an Italian accent coming from Renaissance era Florence. As Jessica Drew grinds him with her motorcycle tire, notice how tan feathers molt off of him. Then we see Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, from the post credit scene of the 2018 film. He's reviewing an audio file of him with his daughter. This file is labeled Gabriella 11, uh-oh, dead kid. Then Miles flees dozens of other spider folks, like a high school kid who snuck into the frat party. As he moves, a few frames show his legs and his hands fanned out all together in one frame, which is more Looney Tunes scramble style animation, like what we saw from Spider-Ham. Just a really fun way of making Miles look desperate and clumsy. There's a jock Spider-Man whose legs Miles slides under, and then another with a Santa hoodie, and Miles' hand looks like it gets a little too close to her booty. And yes, Jess pointed out how in the upper left corner is a literal spider monkey, and I adore this. Now Miguel sprints toward Miles as Miles looks trapped in an apparatus with robotic arms either poking at him or maybe cocooning him. Like, could the reason Miles is being excluded is that in Miguel's view, Miles becoming a Spider-Man was an anomaly that wasn't supposed to happen and Miles' existence is the root cause of the Spider-Verse crisis. So Miles thinks Miles just needs to be cocooned to patch the flaw. It just sounds like based on the audio here that Miguel is going to be an antagonist to Miles. So this could actually endear Miles closer to someone like the Spot. I actually believe Jason Schwartzman was cast in this role because of his roles in movies like Rushmore, Scott Pilgrim versus the world, where he plays these nerdy elitist figures who don't really fit in and end up bending the world to their will. Director Kent Powers explained last summer that the spot's design is meant to look like an unfinished sketch, starting with blue construction lines to look like a comic book artist's rough sketch before the anchor gets there, and that the character's design will evolve over the course of the film as the character becomes more and more confident in his powers. And as Miles flees upward from the others, one design detail that I just love about the bombastic Bagman running beneath him is ink dot inner texturing. These are the CMYK colors that were in every old school comic book printing if you look really closely. But here, notice that the ink dots within him stay the same size rather than reducing or enlarging to convey distance. Like as he gets closer, it's just more dots, which is wild because it kind of suggests that whatever the spatial distance is with this guy, he's just like cut out of an 
Inc. universe that overlaps our own at a constantly equidistant scale from us. If that didn't make any sense to you, just uh, play it back and watch it again. And I love it, Miles is able to foil the bombastic bag man by turning the paper bag around on his head. Then Gwen appears in close-up, glowing vibrant yellow shades as robotic arms in that yellow and blue diamond pattern forms behind her. Seems like she is on the inside of that cocoon structure that we saw Miles inside of earlier. Also, it looks like she has some artist initials on her cheek. Maybe it's just a scar, but it could be like how Matt Groening hid his initials in Homer Simpson's hair and his ear. Then Miguel gallops down what looks like some kind of long vehicle along a futuristic Nueva York transportation line with Spanish signs, por favor siga el limit, please follow the speed limit. Also, a quick frame shows Miguel as part of an animation storyboard with some artist notes in the corner, imperial violet and crimson red. This is instructing the inker what ink color to fill in the character. And these shades are the specific shades of red and indigo for Miguel's suit. Also, there are a few other characters behind Miguel here. It looks like Gwen and Peter B. Parker. Miguel passes an ad, Mirinda Co. I love this detail because Mirinda is a Spanish soft drink that's now owned by PepsiCo. So I guess in Nueva York, Mirinda bought Pepsi instead. And as Miguel grabs Miles, they pass another ad for Nueva Soft, which might be a variant of Microsoft. Now in total, there will be six new universes shown here, including Nueva York, which Lord Miller showed some biz dev art for, saying it was based on 70s and 80s Sid Mead drawings of an aspirational future with an unfinished look in which you can see the lines beneath it, which might explain the storyboard frame with the artist notes that we saw with Miguel O'Hara. They also revealed Pavitar Pravakar, an Indian Spider-Man who lives in Mumbatton, Marvel 50101, which we saw a lot of in the first teaser that released in December 2021. Be sure to go watch that breakdown because all the action words translate into like Hindi and Tamil. But Lord Miller said that Mumbatton is the opposite of Manhattan in that rather than going up and up, it goes down and down. We're also gonna see Gwen Stacy's New York, Universe 65, in which Lord Miller said they based on watercolor that changes based on Gwen's mood. Oh my God, the artistry and the design is what I love most about these films. It brings in a whole deeper layer of meaning, but definitely, definitely go watch Jess's Easter egg breakdown because that woman spent so much time identifying all the cameos to a depth that everyone else I've seen online is giving up on and coming back up for air. But not Jessica, she's brilliant. She found everything. Also stay tuned for MT's awesome multiverse logic breakdown because the rules of the Spider-Verse need some explaining and MT's got you covered there. You can follow me on TikTok, Hive, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank <laughs> you.